Do you really only live once? A lot of people believe in reincarnation and some even have memories of a past life. But time works in mysterious ways. What if those lives are not completely in the past? What if they are present right here and now for you to reach into? This is a Writing Warriors podcast with writer Jelletaj Pasma about personal experiences with reincarnation, past life memories and personalities. Welcome to the Adventure of Lifetimes. So, dear listeners, I will just start. <laughs> this is my first podcast and I am not really sure how this will go, but I will give it a try. I will introduce myself in this first episode. My name is Jelle Tash. That is a combination name, which I will tell you about later, how that came to be. I was born as Daniele um, in the Netherlands, uh, where I live. And for the first 43 years uh, of my life, things were, well, nice, um, just intense also now and then. I had a lot of things that I went through, well, just basically life. The 2nd of May 2012, though, something weird happened. I was that day with my best friend, Renilde. And we were spending a day together uh, doing all kinds of creative stuff. Uh, our daughters, who were then, I think, like uh, 11, yeah, uh, were playing in the garden. And it was really beautiful weather. We wanted to cook outside on open fire, a uh, thing that we love to do. And um, we were just going about our day and it was really nice. And then the conversation came to the topic of reincarnation. Well, for Renilde and me both, reincarnation is just a given. It is something that has been true for us uh, our entire life. That is just normal uh, part of daily life in the sense that the consciousness is on it. We believe in it. It's just a given to us. We were already, at that day, like 15 years friends. And our meeting, uh, the first time we met up, was also one of enormous recognition. We saw each other and we just started off uh, as if we knew each other for a long time already. It was really familiar. And for us, there was also not a doubt that we knew each other already in a past life. But the weird thing is, we never came to it, to think about it, to what um, what would we have been to each other? What what kind of life would we have lived together? So that was, was peculiar for us, because we talked about everything. And this subject just didn't come up. But at that day, the 2nd of May, 2012, we were standing in the kitchen of my workspace. Yeah, my workspace has a kitchen. <laughs> and we were standing in front of each other and we looked at each other and we started talking about that topic of reincarnation. What would we have been to each other in a past life? And then something really weird happened. It was like veils were pushed aside, like a curtain was shoved to the side and suddenly the both of us at the same time saw each other as two men. So we saw the other one as a man instead of the woman that was just standing in front of us, in front of our eyes. And that was incredible. It was really weird. I saw my best friend Renilde just grow before my eyes into this enormous giant man with long black hair and a long black beard and just really just intense black eyes. And she saw me turning into a man with 
vibrant, green, intense eyes, red hair, red beard, and just all men and with an enormous energy. And we looked at each other, and it was, of course, not with our normal daily eyes, but we saw each other through our third eye, through our, in our mind's eye, we really saw each other change. And at that time, I did not only see Renilde turn into this giant man, but I also felt in myself an incredible surge of energy coming up. It was like a tsunami who was just flooding all into me and filled me up with this incredible energy, male energy. And that was so weird. And at that moment, exactly at the same time, we knew this was a past life of us. We were two men, two friends, because we immediately felt that we were friends to the death. And somehow we felt, yeah, literally. This energy just came up. And for me, and also because of that for Renilde, it stayed. It stayed with us the whole day. For me, I not only felt this energy coming up, but I felt myself becoming this man. I felt how I I was. I felt the character that I had. I felt the energy that I had. I felt like my body, the energy of my body, was getting male, getting a man's energy. And it was really weird um, for from that perception to feel the woman's body that I was in. So my consciousness sort of shifted, not sort of, it shifted into this man, into this male person. And with it, a whole bunch of memories came flooding in. Memories of fighting, memories of a sword, memories of living outside and sleeping at a campfire, memories of constantly being on the road on horseback with this other man, with this big black haired dude, (laughs) which was my best friend. Immediately, those memories came back. That day, we were already planning to cook an open fire in the garden. And that enhanced the whole feeling. And it stimulated the uh, memories coming back. So it was a really weird but beautiful day. Now and then... Our daughters, who were playing uh, in, in another part of the garden, came to ask for something and they addressed us, obviously, as our mothers, their mothers. Um, so that was, especially for me, it was an incredible shift every time. I had to shift to my female self my female energy, my motherhood, uh, to address my daughter, to to talk to her, to do all the things that she asked of me or that were uh, necessary at that moment. But this male energy just kept being present, really strong. We went through that day experiencing the memories coming back to us. And we talked a lot. We got a lot clear. We felt really strongly because we remembered that we were two friends. That we lived um, a traveling life 
that we were on the road, that we were fighters, that we lived from our swords, and that we had this existence where we, to each other, were almost the only person that we were really connected to. It felt like a life full of adventure. And I remember that I said also at that point, it was a life full of fire, of fighting and of women. (laughs) It felt like a simple life at that moment. And we had the strong feeling that we were traveling somewhere in England or Scotland. In any case, the British Isles. That day was remarkable. The energy was remarkable. But at the end of the day, Renilde went home with her daughter. My husband came back with his sons and it was just the normal family again. But the energy of this man kept with me, kept being with me. He didn't leave. And that was an incredible strange feeling. He just stayed with me. It was not because I had memories of past lives before, but those were like flashes, like a lot of people have, you know, just uh, a sudden flash of um, of a memory, um, and you can place it in in a certain time. You can place it in a certain way of life. Like for instance, I I knew of a lot of past lives that I've um, lived a life as a nun in a nunnery. That um, I I had the feeling that I lived uh, quite a couple of warrior lives. Um, just flashes, just um, um, hints of a life that you can place or that you can feel um, information around. But this, this was different. This was really him being back. And the weird thing is, he was here next to my own female personality, my personality of this life, my personality of Daniela. Um, I, I was called Yella also already. Um, but this, this uh, male personality, he was just next to my female personality. And he didn't go away again. He didn't leave. He just kept being there. And that felt really weird. That same evening, I got my name back. The weird thing is, I saw it written. I saw it written in my mind's eye. I saw Thomas written. But I heard in my, in my head, I heard Tamash. Okay, that didn't sound English to me. That sounded more Eastern European. Like at that point I thought Czech or uh, Hungarian. And then I was looking things up and then I realized, yes, this was Hungarian. This was a Hungarian name. When I told that to Renilde the next day, she told me a really weird story. That evening before, at the moment that I got my name back, that I got the name Tamash back, she was sitting in a bath. And suddenly, she had like a vision. She had, she saw the the image of this image enormous head 
<laughs> of this black haired, black bearded, black eyed man. The same vision that I had already seen of her. But she also, she of course didn't because she saw me. She saw me as the, the past life man that I used to be. I saw her as the past life man that she used to be. But that evening, she was sitting in a bath and she suddenly saw this face looking at her. It was, she said later, it was like looking in a mirror. And he just kept on staring at her like she was staring at him. (laughs) It was some sort of a spiritual mirror that she was looking into. She saw her own face as this man. And also with her, her name came back. His name came back. and But it was in a way that she couldn't... Um, she, co- she couldn't tell me because she heard it in her head. But she couldn't pronounce it exactly the way that she heard it. Because it was... She, she had the feeling it was his ma- mother that called him. So it was somebody else with another pronunciation, with a way of saying that name that was not in her capability of speaking. But it sounded a bit like Kevinar. And at that moment, she knew that he was a gypsy. He was a gypsy. When I told her about the name Tamash being Hungarian, then we knew. Kev, Kevinar, which we immediately also knew that was shortened to Kev. Kev was a gypsy. Tamash, which Renilde immediately knew through the memories of Kev, um, that was shortened. Tamash was shortened to Tash. Tash and Kev were Hungarian. But what the hell did they then do in England or Scotland? How did they came to be there? We felt that this was far more of a story than we ever knew. Right in the beginning, because it felt, in the beginning, it felt like this simple life. Oh, but no. Slowly, we began to feel that this was not a simple life at all. There was a lot of story there. From that day on, the memories with the two of us came, kept on coming back it was like there was there the opened this these doors and the memories just kept on coming and you know what it is like when you yourself go to memories of your youth in this life just your youth now and you are talking with somebody about these memories then um then it goes like right yeah i remember that oh and then you did this and we went there and then it's like you are opening a door and you just walk in you walk into the memory and you keep seeing more there keeps on coming more of that memory and more detailed and further in in time and the connection to other memories. Well, it felt exactly the same with us. So it didn't feel like um, a past life memory. That was the weird thing. It didn't feel like something that came into our minds of somebody else. Another personality that we used to be in a past life. It felt like these are memories that are just 
connected to us right now. These felt like, for me, it felt like my own memories. My own memories of my youth and of a life before this moment in time. But not like a past life. And I kept on feeling this energy of Tamash, of Tash, in me. It was not with me or around me or that I, as Renilde described for her, that she could sort of step back into the energy of Kev, of Kevinar. For me, it was right next to my female personality of my personality of this life. It was right next to it at the same level. In the same way that I used to feel present in my uh, present life. And that was um, that um, I had some getting used to to do (laughs) in that. Because I kept on feeling like I was two people. And I actually was. The only thing is, everything happened in one body. But Tash could feel his own male um, physical energy. He could connect to that. So when he um, just felt into his body, then it was like the body changed, like the feeling of the body changed. The body didn't change, of course, because that is just the body (laughs) that um, we live in. But uh, the feeling of it changed, the energy of it changed. And he could just feel how his body felt back then. And that was a rather confusing sometimes. <laughs> it was really uh, a weird sensation to feel like a man in a woman's body. And, um, and I mean then also in, um, so energy wise, so I, 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 I think that this is different from somebody who is, for instance, transgender, who is feeling that, uh, like, like for instance, uh, a male person in a female body, he feels constantly that he is this man in a woman's body. But when you can feel and tap into the energy of a known uh, male body, and that energy is just present then that is a really weird sensation (laughs) Uh, you can maybe imagine how incredibly confusing that was for me at first because what I did it just he kept on being there and with him being there and with all the memories uh, coming back There was also something else happening because that life of Tash, of Kev, it was not really that simple like we used to think in the beginning. Far from it. So there came so many memories back that really made clear how incredibly complicated and intense this life was and that we lived through so much and um well that is too much to to talk about right now but i can tell you that with all the memories and the energy of tash being there there also came a lot of um difficult energies and difficult feelings um 
really, uh, sometimes really dark thoughts that came into my existence. And those were not the thoughts of me as Jelle. Those were the thoughts of Tash. So, (laughs) that was the situation that I was in. I felt both a woman and a man in a woman's body. I kept on getting memories back of a past life in the Middle Ages. We didn't, I didn't tell you that yet, but it was in the Middle Ages. Memories of a fighter, of a swordsman. Um, it became rather, um, soon it became clear that it was a mercenary. We were mercenaries in the Middle Ages. So many information came flooding back. I had to um, get used to being with two people in one body. I had my husband and my family to get this sort of um, this place in. Um, because at the same time, I really felt like this was meant to happen to me. I really felt this is not a disorder. This is not a disturbance. This is not something that needs to go because I'm getting crazy. This is something that needs to happen. That suits me. This is what I have been waiting for. That weird thought was there as well. This is what I have been waiting for. Because this is me. And with that feeling, also memories came back. Memories of this life as a kid, where I used to feel, as a really small kid, I used to feel both a boy and a girl. Uh, I used to play with other kids when we when we played dress up and and all kinds of um things that the plays that we made up or stories that we made up uh, and parts that we played in that I always used to play the male hero <laughs> well the hero not not of course some random guy but the male hero but never like the the female hero always the male when I was in puberty, in high school, there was this time that I tried to change my name. I was called Daniela, but I never felt that that name was me. So I tried to change it into Denny, which was also not the name. It was also not fitting me. But after that I looked back to it, I realized... Well, yeah, this was already this boy who wanted to come out. When I was a bit further in puberty, I had dreams about me being a boy and seducing a girl. So it was, it was always there. It was always with me and not consciously because what happens when uh, a small kid who is both a boy and a girl, but is only addressed as a girl. Because, yeah, of course, you see a girl, there is this girl, so people address you as a girl. Um, the thing that happens to the part that is not addressed, the boy, in my case, that went into my subconscious. And it all went subconsciously. It was not a conscious process. But when I looked back at my childhood, I realized that I was always there. That I always felt both. So when this all happened to me, of course there were moments that I thought I was going crazy. But what the main feeling was is, finally... This is what I have been waiting for. I also use the metaphor of this 
um, circus artist that is in a glass box. You know, just the, the, the old uh, performances of a, sh- a circus artist who just folds himself or herself completely in this really small glass box. And you can see how all the, the limbs are just sort of in an impossible angle folded up <laughs> to a really small package. But what I what it felt like is that this artist finally could come out of the glass box and stretch herself or himself into the the actual um, posture and actual length and and um, space that his or her body need needs to uh, take take up. So just really be. Uh, free in movement again and to be able to stretch and that is what it felt like I finally could be my true height my true volume (laughs) so there was this stubborn thing in me that even though I also, but also like my husband and even Renilde, um, were thinking, um, oh, is this, uh, going okay? Is this, uh, is this right that this happens? Because these are memories of a past life. It should be in the past, right? You should let it go. Uh, this is now. You are living now and now you are a woman. So just, This is taking too much space, taking up too much reality, (laughs) too much of daily life. He is not, he he should not be here at that level. Of course, I was thinking the same. But there was this stubborn feeling inside of me that said, nope. (laughs) This is right. This is who I am. This is who I should be. And there was this one friend of mine, an elderly woman. She was called Antoinette. She's not here anymore. Uh, She passed away. But back then she was there and she kept on just supporting me and stimulating me. This is right, you should explore this. And yeah, it will be difficult, but go, go on, jump, do this, let him in, explore who he is, because through him you can explore who you are in total. So, here I was. At that point, already a couple of months in the whole process. Not one second did he leave. Tash was always there. And I was feeling what do I do with this because I need something. I need something to be able to cope with this better because there was so much going on. There were so many memories. There were so many emotions and um, dark thoughts and uh, well how for fuck's sake do you do this how do you live with two people with two personalities of which one is a medieval mercenary for god's sake with with uh, um, disturbed thoughts and and dark past and whatever and at the, the other hand you are a woman with just a normal family with uh, a husband and three kids to one daughter and two bonus sons. How do you do this? So something needed to happen. I was already writing a book because my whole life I felt that I was a writer and that One day, I was going to write books. Not a book, but books. I was a writer. I felt that my whole life already. I never did it. (laughs) Until like half a year before all this started to happen, I was 
actually starting to write a book. And it was not for nothing, of course. It was already paving the, the way for, uh, for what was, was to come. And when I was in this situation, like, I need to do something. I felt, yeah, but this story needs to be told. This story needs to be written down. So I abandoned the book that I was writing. It was not meant to be anyway. It was just a setup for the other book, books that needed to come. And I started to write about everything that happened to me. I started to write down all the memories that came to me. The memories of a life in the 13th century, starting in Hungary, as a bastard son of an Hungarian count, with his best friend, a gypsy boy of around the same age, and things that happened there in Hungary that made them have to go away to leave their home, their country, their whole existence, and made them travel to England and Scotland, where they first in England had uh, two years at a blacksmith. They lived there to uh, forge their swords. And after that, they lived a mercenary life with a whole lot of adventures. And finally, at around 32, they both died at the same time on a Scottish battlefield. And that story was so unique that it needed to be written down. And during that time of writing, I found my way of weaving the story of the present into these books. And years after, to be exact, Nine years after I started writing, there are three books. It's a trilogy. And they have become, if I say so myself, really um, suspenseful, fascinating um, books that play with time, jump from present to past and back again. And in the three books, the whole story of Tash and Kev, but also of me as Jelle and Renilde, is told. A lot of the present things are um, also mixed with um, fiction is just colored with fiction, so I could tell, really could tell my story. But it is the story. It is what happened. Somewhere in the whole story, there is exactly what happened to me, to Renilde, to Tash, and to Kev. And soon, the first of the trilogy, because the trilogy is written in Dutch and it is also published in Dutch um, first, but I am about to publish the first book, Red Hands, the first part of the trilogy in English. So stay tuned for this, uh, because then you can read it too. Anyway, there is so much to tell about my life as a duo personality because you have been listening to me as Jelle right now but there is also me as Tash. I will not let him speak. <laughs> I will not speak as Tash in this first episode because there is already so much. 
but I will also let him take the word in other episodes and um, I will tell you a lot of what has been happening to me now almost 10 years since 10 years ago because this whole waking up stuff happened in 2012 so almost 10 years ago this all opened up and from that day on my whole life completely changed i now live as a dual personality what in the native cultures uh, also is called a two-spirit. I live my life as a dual personality. I am a man, I am a woman in one woman's body. I have two conscious personalities, so it's not that one takes over, but I have always, at any point in time, I am present with two personalities. I live that life, and also my male personality is somebody who lived before in time, when we talk about time uh, in a chronological way. There is so much to talk about on that subject, but there will be another time. So, I lived, I live with two personalities, a man and a woman in a woman's body with the man who used to live his life in the Middle Ages, who was a mercenary and lived by the sword, but who is also now living here for 10 years already and evolving as a man. So he didn't stay at the same um, place in the same way that he used, that he was at the moment that he woke up that he came into consciousness. No, he evolved like everybody who lives. And he learned so incredibly much and he is a completely different person now than he used to be. So, this this is my um, remarkable <laughs> way of being. Uh, this is a remarkable story in my life. And because I am, I have so much experiences with um, really consciously being reincarnated, but also um, the past life being present again, I thought that it was um, a good, <laughs> that it was a good idea to share this in these podcasts. And I want to talk about a lot more than my own story. I want to talk about the uh, all kinds of stuff in uh, the theme of reincarnation, past life memories, past life personalities, but also how, what is time doing? Are we living these lives at the same time? Uh, stories of other people, questions that you may have uh, to me personally or about reincarnation in general. So I would like to talk about reincarnation and everything that has to do with that subject in this podcast, The Adventure of Lifetimes. So stay tuned. I will end this for now. I will post a podcast regularly and I hope you, you enjoyed listening to this story there is far more to tell so um, when you like to hear more just subscribe to my podcast the adventure of lifetimes and you will hear me later oh and when you are interested in the books of the red trilogy just um, stay tuned because the first one red hands is in a few weeks he's going to be published in English, so then you can read the first part of the trilogy. I love this very much, so I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, gives me give me a, a nice review, a subscribe, um, whatever needs to happen to <laughs> to get this a bit more into the air, 
and uh, I will uh, talk to you later. Okay? Bye. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to The Adventure of Lifetimes. You can find me, Yelatash, and my books with the links in the description. Until next time, past, present, or future.